I never really liked Foursquare, and I had I was thinking one day about how it's kind of like a digital pissing contest, uh, and so then I was like, huh. What if it actually was a pissing contest? Um, and so that's when I came up with this idea of trying to patch over this physical digital divide by allowing you to check into Foursquare by actually urinating on a location of that place. Um, my idea is to patch over this digital physical divide by using some of the affordances of our old way of marking territory. Um, so the way it works is you would carry around little business cards, uh, like people do, except these have a special little affordance of a pokey part, uh, so you can actually stake a claim to a physical venue. So, uh, I don't have you, you want to just put this right in that floor, okay? So you would stake your claim. Let's pretend that this is a McDonald's right now, okay? So then, what you would do is... You would, um, this app automatically starts up as soon as you plug in your little device, and you would find the place, just like Foursquare, that you want to check in. So we're going to check in at this McDonald's. Um, and when I do that, in order to check in, I'm going to have you check in for me. Or you can if you want. You are going to pretend to pee on this uh, little device here. So you'll be checking in, and so now squirt that device right there. Squirt it real bit. Squeeze it. Squeeze it. Yeah, get a lot of water. Okay, good. Oh, that's a good piece. So you can see, as she was peeing on it, this meter was filling up, um, showing how well she has peed and marked this area, okay? So if she only gave a little squirt, it would just be a little bit of the uh, checking in. If, uh, uh, so, uh, then, uh, after a certain timer is up, um, and you've peed, it registers your check-in. If you peed in very well, like she did, um, she got a grade A. Um, and so her mark goes automatically to Foursquare, and you'll see that she checked in at most, and it comes with different messages are generated depending on how well you checked in. So her says, this is my place, physical check-in, score A. So you got a grade A. Because you peed on a substitution for urination to check in. I mean, like, um, I mean, in theory, we're using a prosthetic urine of, uh, of just water right now. I don't want to go to those. And... So the problem is, though, is that you are is that I'm trying to patch this digital physical device. Um, if you just squirt water on something, then the squirrels next door they don't know that you checked into Moe's. But if you pee on it, they're like, that guy keeps peeing on this boat. He is the mayor. <laughs> Another factor is that um, if you just use water, um, your dog, uh, it can't check in to Foursquare. So your, your pets, um, they, they, have, they have no idea of the existence of this digital layer of fake worlds that are created by Foursquare. Whereas if uh, you build your pet a Foursquare account, he can now check in to all sorts of places and share this, this information with other dogs and share it with humans. <laughs> so everybody knows. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a couple other affordances of this physical device um, that are special that try to take in some of the affordances of the Foursquare digital game world. So first you'll notice that at, at the top it just says Andy was here. Uh, so people will walk up and see these little claimers and be like, Andy was there, okay, some Andy guy was there. If you pee well enough, you'll wash off this uh, silver coating and you'll see a little QR code. So people will be like, Andy was there, take a picture of it, and it'll bring you to Andy's website. And they'll be like, oh, that Andy was there. So you're sharing more information depending on the quality of your check-in. Uh, another factor is that um, in the natural world, there exists a thing such as unbiased profiles. A wolf can go um, to a stump and pee on a stump, and not only does it say like, oh, I'm a wolf, or not only does it say, I'm playing this area, it also tells all the other animals, a wolf playing this area, and a wolf that tends to eat mostly rabbits and pears. Uh, it gives you it gives you ideas of the, the physiology of this particular animal. But the wolf has to pee on the sensor. It also tells you, <laughs> yeah. It also tells you things about the wolf's uh, hormonal makeup too. So in the digital world, it doesn't really exist this sort of thing. Um, whenever you make a profile, you're always adding information yourself. So you, so I can say that 
I'm uh, an 80 year old woman who lives in Alabama. It's just not true. There's nothing in the internet really that uh, only comes from me in a completely unbiased way. So in order to cab these unbiased profiles, each of these papers are litmus paper, and if you pee on it, uh, it will either turn red or blue. Um, it'll tend to turn red if you eat more meat, and it'll tend to turn blue if you eat less meat. Um, so uh, so you, you can go up to a Moe's, for instance, and see, oh, there's a bunch of blue markers around here. There must be a bunch of vegetarians that uh, venture into this Moe's. It's a very vegan-friendly place. So there's some unbiased information you can leave. Or maybe somebody sees this, they see, oh, Andy was here. Oh, but he pees red. I don't even want to know him. I hate carnivores. I hate meat eaters or something. <laughs> One of the last parts of this is that each of these tags will eventually degrade, forcing you to um, go back and keep maintain your ownership of the place. Um, but you can still have a long-lasting impact on the place because there are seeds specific to each individual embedded with a little bit of dirt that are activated to germinate whenever you um, pee on them. Uh, so you'll notice, like, oh, there's lots of tomato plants growing there. Andy must have been here. Even though, <laughs> even though it's 10 years after Andy had visited that place. In the future, we'll have very specific uh, genetically engineered plants for each individual that will contain a genetic watermark of your profile information. So you can use your genetic scanner to scan an area hundreds of years in the future and see this great oak forest. And you're like, oh. Andy must have peed here on the ruins of this old McDonald's. Uh, yeah. so, this is a bold claim. Yeah, so that's my claim. And that is, that is how I feel you should check into a place. Okay. So Google uh, has an operating system called Android that's open source and developers can use it to make interesting apps for a phone. One of the problems is though is that these apps can really only do things on the internet or what phones typically do. Uh, such as have a camera or maybe record audio. Um, there's also, meanwhile, boards um, that you can program called Arduinos that uh, allow you to interact with physical environments. You can attach sensors um, to these boards, uh, such as like a moisture sensor, a light sensor, um, uh, and then you can also install actuators and things to manipulate the physical environment to this board. And so what's interesting is over the summer, uh, July 2011, Google came out with a special version of this board that talks directly to Android. So now with my phone, I can feed in sensed information and I can also pass out commands to controllers. So if I had servo motors hooked up to this, I could make a robot crawl just by using my phone. Um, or I could sense uh, moisture readings uh, within the entire um, whatever my, my phone is hooked up to via this uh, special board here. Um, so that's what the Arduino ADK uh, mega board.